Hello and welcome to Frank's School. This looks like a lot for this 127th day. I, I can go through it pretty fast. Uh, I'm giving a gloss to uh, James Burke's uh, The Day the Universe Changed, Episode 6, Credit Where It's Due. Yesterday, I, I got the Quakers and the Puritans mixed up, uh, although there's a reason for that. Th that is very complicated, that history. Quakers, Pennsylvania, Puritans, New England. Uh, although, I mean, they're, they're, well, the, when I went to the Quaker meeting uh, a couple times as a kid, it was in New England. And uh, here we have a Hartley Bank, not a Barclay Bank. I got them mixed up. All right, well, in what you're going to see today, Scotch whiskey is the, the transition he uses, uh, not made up. I mean, coal uh, brought by canal could power those distilleries. Uh, Black, I don't know his first name, his concept of latent heat, he'll, he'll discuss that. Burke is a science historian. James Watt's steam engine, as he says, well, that changed the world. Uh, Notice the flat belts uh, the, uh, that are driving uh, the equipment, the flat belts. That's the, in the Old and Other Ways Museum. I intend to have many machines driven off a water wheel, from a water wheel by flat belts. They, they were before V-belts is what people use now. And the vaulted ceiling, when he's in that empty factory, um, notice the ceiling. He doesn't say anything about it, but it's vaulted uh, to the probably cast iron uh, or, yeah, uh, or structural steel girders. Uh, he talks about child labor. Well, I, I don't know, I can't remember what he's going to do with the romantics. But the, rem the romantic uh, impulse period comes uh, right after this, really. And the child labor was one of the things that, that, that the romantics found so offensive. A hundred horsepower. Notice that figure. I, I wrote it down so you'd notice it. He said one engine, 100 horsepower, that, which would be down in the basement somewhere, <clears throat> steam engine of that factory, and all the people that it employed and all that it did. Well, 100 horsepower, I think now that would be a very small uh, car engine, I think. I, I don't pay too much attention to that, but, but I suspect that a typical car, even now, the small ones probably have 100 horsepower. Um, in, in the day, I think uh, car, en car engines had 300 horsepower or so, I don't know. Um, Wedgwood, uh, by the end of the 18th century, I, I wrote that down too, to try to peg it for you in time. That would be around 1795. I use a 1750 in my mind for the, a figure for the start of the, in the Industrial Revolution. Consumerism becomes a a factor and it is huge. Uh, uh, I will be discussing it in uh, uh, the Decentralist Manifesto, uh, Rising Expectations, Organized Labor. He, he, he deals with it. I'm just writing it down to say here's what's coming. Uh, he deals with railways as a, well he doesn't so much say as opposed to canals, but the, uh, the birth of the railways now that happened all over the world. I mean, there was a canal from Washington, D.C. To, to not very far south of here. Uh, but then it, it was abandoned because of the railways. Well, the thing about that is these are both very much more energy efficient ways to transport goods than trucks or, or automobiles. But, by contrast, railways use so much more kilocalories as currency than canals. Uh, canals were ecologically more moral. I guess I could say that. Once they were built, I mean the building of them was also done largely with manpower and horsepower. So if you would contrast that, uh, I mean on a scale of kilocalories as currency they are vastly different, vastly different, but then that's what the Industrial Revolution was about and see Wedge's paradigm. If you don't really understand what I'm talking about, well, in my course I taught about Wedge's paradigm and that's what I'm discussing here. You could measure that. Um, okay, uh, 1843 was the figure he used for that train in Jamaica and notice that he comes back to Jamaica where he started. He likes to do that whenever he can. On a personal level, I, I got such a memory because uh, in 1969 I took a steam engine train across uh, eastern Bolivia 
uh, as part of a vacation when I was in the Peace Corps, uh, and it was it was sort of similar to that. Uh, although I I don't I don't not so, I don't think the one that he was on was steam, but but anyway I remembered his phrase inbreeding was out. Well, that business of people moving about now, uh, meeting people, corresponding with people long distances away. Well, yeah, and, and think of what the Internet uh, is doing on that as well, where people can have relationships with people on the other side of the world. Uh, and then I, I finally want to say that at the end of this episode, he is cautionary. You know, he's saying, how long can this last, this Industrial Revolution? Well, that was about 30 years ago that he was cautionary like that. And in the last 30 years, um, well, yeah, that's sort of the subject of uh, the Decentralist Manifesto in a way. Uh, that, but, uh, all right, well, that bring, well, we'll bring it to the end. And I will make a second video today. I'm going to continue to read my Decentralist Manifesto. So I uh, hope to see you next time.